So we have the deer hide. It's in its secondary salting. We're gonna go ahead and take it out and we're gonna uh, beat the salt off of it. We're gonna be like Michael Jackson and just beat it. Yeah, that was stupid. But um, we're gonna go ahead and <clears throat> get this thing out of here. See how she's looking. We're looking good. Coming around. Alright, so that's all I did for the bucket. I had an inverted bowl with the hide set on top and that allowed the moisture being drawn out by the salt to drop to the bottom. But uh, this hide is, she's turning out pretty good. I'm excited about it and now we do a salt bath. You guys will have to forgive how I sound. i am uh, been under the weather. And it's not the C word. Well, not that C word. But anyway, we got some hot water from the artesian and uh, we got some regular table salt here. You can use non iodized, which I've used in the past. I find that just regular table salt works fine. So we're going to go ahead. This is roughly two and a half gallons and it's half a pound of salt per gallon. So we need one and a half of these, basically. We. I'm gonna stir it with my incredibly fancy stir stick here. A little bit of bark and dirt never hurt anybody. I don't think the Indians had sterile conditions for their tanning. No, sir. Mix it up. All right, so now we let the water cool down and then we add the hide. We don't want to add the hide while the water's still hot. It could cause those hairs to slip and we're trying to avoid that. So we have this hide tanning formula, the deer hunters and trappers. I'm sure you guys have seen this all over YouTube already. The reason I'm using this formula is because this isn't my hide. Uh, this hide belongs to a good buddy of mine and I want those hairs to set properly. I have used uh, egg tanning, brain tanning, you name it, they all work fine. I'm doing this so that I don't have to worry about any other issues down the road um, because it's special to him. And he's a good friend, so, you know, I just want to make sure that it's done properly. And without risk of any hair slippage, because this is a beautiful piebald deer. Really beautiful hide. It's going to look really good when it's all said and done. So, yep, stick with me. We're going to let this water cool. And then we're going to go ahead and submerge that hide. And, of course, here we got the coyote from this season. Uh, just nicely furred. Beautiful dog. That is going to be a fun project because I'm planning on making a, uh, a shawl with it, like a mountain man shawl. This right here, this is a coon I did with this formula years ago. I've tanned quite a bit with this stuff, but you can see the, uh, the quality of the hide. You know, it really does give you that, you know, smoke tan look when it's all said and done. And that's really what I'm aiming for. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it does a really good job. But uh, these two foxes over here, that's going to be another project. Hopefully I'll make a hat for me and my boy. And uh, that'll be, that'll be fun. Alright guys, so our water's cooled down. We got our hide here. I've got the flesh side out. Because um, it's very limited space here. But we're going to go ahead and take this thing. Get it soaked in the water. And we're going to soak it for about nine hours and I'm going to come back 
every so often and agitate it. But pretty much just like that, we're gonna leave it for nine hours. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'll probably just put a brick on top. I'll come back and agitate it every so often. And uh, then we will move on to the next step. It's gonna be awesome. It already feels good. It's really gonna lighten up, whiten up. It's gonna be great. So me and my son are here today. We've got the hide after it's soaked all night. I wrung it out and hung it on a chain link fence to kind of air out. And uh, it's it's like a medium dry. Uh, some areas are drier than others, but you can see it's still pliable. So I'm coming around with this. It's actually a <clears throat> animal hair scraper. You can see it's got a finer tooth side and then a coarser tooth side. I'm taking the coarse side and we're just rolling it over this hide and we're breaking that membrane. It's a lot easier to break that membrane like this and uh, it gives you more of a suede type look when it's all said and done. And you can come back with a knife and uh, start kind of scraping over top, get some of those loose pieces off, break it up even more. And it works out pretty well. And that's my son with a pretend gun who doesn't know how to be quiet but that's okay how you feeling better better than what um uh, i just playing with my toys oh okay cool we're about to go get mulch for the garden aren't we yep yep and the flower garden and the buttercups uh okay yep you said it all right, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, it's not rocket science, but it does take time. It's time consuming. I have, I have rock and roll. You have rock and roll. Because I said rocket science, it sounds like rockin' science. Rock and roll science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah. Yep. Where's your chainsaw? Yeah, chain, oh, yep. I see. Chainsaw's up there. All right, so if you don't have time, which I never have time, to do it the kind of old-fashioned way with a scraper, you can always use a drill with a coarse wire wheel and just roll right over it, just like that. And they'll pull off a lot of that membrane. Doesn't take a lot of time. And then you can come back with your knife and kind of scrape up those loose fibers. And it's a lot easier to scrape it up like that. See those loose fibers coming up? And then that's gonna give you a really nice suede-like tan on this side, which is what I wanted. Um, really cool, you know, quick way of doing that and really good results when it's all said and done. But uh, you can see the membrane just kind of peeling right up. So we're just gonna keep working at it and see what we get. Sorry for the wind noise, guys, but I wanted to show you. I'm working this back out on the fleshing beam. I soaked it for uh, just a few minutes in Dawn solution, and then I rinsed it once. Now I'm taking what was broken down with that wheel, and I'm just working the dull edge of my knife down and you know, really breaking the rest of that hide off. It's windy out, it's messy. Just trying to get this done we want it all to look mostly white like that and we should be good to go all right again guys sorry for the wind but you can see here the hides looking awesome it's looking more leathery supple that's what we want um, it looks great really good color to it so I'm gonna go ahead rinse it one more time and we're gonna go ahead and stitch up the bullet holes um, and I also put a little hole in it when I was Fleshing, which is normal, it was on a, the the edge, basically, where the thinnest part is. But, um, yeah, we're going to get out of this wind because it's kicking my butt today. And um, we're going to get this thing done up right. So an important part of doing your own hides and stuff like that is you need to understand that you're going to put holes somewhere at some point. Even if you're ultra careful... Um, even if you're experienced, it happens to the best of us. But the, the idea is to know how to fix those holes 
properly so that they're unnoticeable. Um, and what I'm using here is a pretty heavy gauge needle and I'm using some nylon thread, nylon bead thread. Uh, this is taxidermy type thread. By the time it's all said and done, you won't even really be able to see it. Um, but I'm doing a baseball stitch. So cross and then cross and then cross and then cross just like that. Um, you know, it's not too difficult. I might make a separate video on that at some other point. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm really trying to stay focused on the tanning aspect of this video. But I just wanted to, to note that, that if you're going to do this type of work, um, you're going to put holes in stuff. It's not a big deal. Just take your time and have the ability to fix them. And we also have these bullet holes here. Um, and the way to deal with those is, you know, you have a round puncture. You actually want to slice on either side of it and then come back and stitch it up and it should blend in quite well. So I've got quite a few holes here to stitch up. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys what it looks like after the fact. All right, here's the stitch from the hole I made. It was kind of a U-shaped hole, um, but you can see here on the other side, um, once that gets brushed out, I mean, you won't even know once it's all said and done. So pretty cool. Um, sometimes hairs get trapped in between. You can just come back and just trim them a little bit. Um, you want to try to avoid that if you can. <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes it's just going to happen. All right. pretty good cool so you can see my bullet hole here I use my Swiss Army tinker um, I'm gonna do a review on this knife I've had it in my pocket for a couple months but um you can see I did a nice fine slice from the hide side and then that hole gets stitched right up and uh, we'll take a look at it when it's done all right guys so that is a stitched bullet after the fact and that's gonna shrink up and get even tighter, but it's actually right here, I think. And again, you know, once the once the fur dries out and uh, gets brushed out and hung up the way I'm gonna do it, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Otherwise, the bullet hole on the fur side would leave like a, I mean, like a pucker mark, and it would almost look like the the hide had ticks or something. Um, so we, you know. We want to make it look nice. We've done all this work so far. <clears throat> we're really, I mean, we're putting in a lot of work, but um, I'm going to keep rolling. We're going to let it dry overnight and uh, it should be still be pliable tomorrow. And we're going to do our, our tanning solution. <laughs>